In today's video, we're covering everything to do with the stock markets, crypto markets, and commodities markets right now, including what may have just been a massive stop hunt that Wall Street has played on everybody. The markets fell, then they recovered, and it could have been some put covering. So let's take a look at that and more right now. Plenty to go through. See you soon. All right, guys, well, this begins our market recap for the markets closed 10th of January, 2022. And when we take a look at a heat map here for the stock markets, one of the best things that we can do, no matter what market you're looking at, you'll notice it was mixed, but this does not tell the full story of what really happened in the session. When we move over to the actual indices and we take a look at the indices straight away here, you'll notice they sold off heavily at the beginning with some markets such as the NASDAQ down as much as two and a half percent at one point and then fully recovered that point near the end of the day. And this is what we call a bit of a retail trap. Oftentimes, retail traders trade in the first hour or the market open. We know that Wall Street knows this. Everybody's excited about the open. And then most people, especially when they begin, will place all their trades in this area. What really we're looking for is the close. What is the close telling us about what Wall Street and the rest of the trading algorithms out there are doing? And in this case, it was buying straight back up. And there are a few reasons why this may have occurred. So we'll take a look at that today. Some amazing supports being reached and not breached in the last 24 hours. But what sector was really doing the best? Was it actually technology or was it some of the sectors that we favor here in the first couple of months of 2022. Well, it looks like biotech actually came back with a little bit of force here, 1.15%. We had healthcare coming in at 1%. And then we had a just general recovery of most of the sectors. There wasn't anything specifically stand out here, but everything did come right back off its lows and really came through with the goods. So is this something we can expect in 2022? Will we expect volatility, especially for the beginning of the year? And the answer is probably yes, we will. And the reason why, guys, is because there are two really high volatility periods usually each year, somewhere around that January to March period. And then, of course, that September into October, maybe November period. These are the two highest volatility, usually where the bears start to crush the market and get control of it. And for bears, you're in luck for 2022 because there's some clear zones that we're going to be seeing over the next few months where if these levels are broken and we'll take a look at those soon you will be pretty damn clear that you're in control of the market but if you're a bull the last 24 hours weren't too bad for you you saw some strong recoveries of some great zones and we'll look at them soon so let's get stuck into the technical analysis straight away and we'll begin by talking about the elephant in the room there's no doubt that everybody believes interest rates inflation and these are the discussion points of 2022 I always look at it from two different things. There are always bits of news that are in control in some ways, and then there are bits of news that are out of control. For an example, Evergrande situation, the stuff that's happening in China and of course the housing market, to a degree that is out of the control. Now, obviously they've plugged the first stop, but eventually that may end up being a really big black swan event. Now, there are some things in control. Now, a lot of people would argue with me, but things like inflation, and of course, interest rates are partially in control of policymakers. So while markets will react negatively at some points, they're usually dip buying opportunities. They're usually an area where buyers and bulls come back into the market and they start to look at it. Remember, it's one of those buy kind of the fact and necessarily sell the rumor when it comes to this because the market here has been selling off we can see with the two-year yield, they're expecting many rate hikes now for the next two years. We're up now at 0.9% on the two-year yield. And this is really telling us that the Wall Street guys are pricing in multiple rate hikes. So whatever you read the news is very different from reality. Wall Street prices in points before it ever occurs. And that's why you hear that buy the rumor, sell the fact, a very big thing that goes on an Apple stock, which we'll be taking a look at today. And just always remember, look at the actual charts, see what the data is telling you, and don't necessarily believe what you're reading in the papers. It's like that whole value transition that's going on right now. Everybody's talking about value, 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 but in many ways, 2022 may not be the year of value like we think it will be. It's possibly actually gonna be back to growth, and we have some real reasons why that may occur in today's video. Let's move over to gold. 
Gold did a nice rebound. It came off that support we were talking about. The trend line here held and it actually gapped underneath and then moved straight back up. So this was a nice little bit of trade here. We've seen gold go back above the 1800s. We know that gold is incredibly choppy. I mean, just by looking at this chart, when you first come in, you might be overwhelmed by it and say, well, where are the resistances, where are the supports? The big key zones are still around that 1810, but really the 1830. If the 1830 is breached and closed above, the bulls are in full control and the big key point is actually going to be closing above this candle here. This is what we call a shooting star candle and when the market and if the market can close above this zone, what that's telling us is that shorts will be covered and buyers will be in full control. So all of the shorters, all of the bears effectively will be squeezed out of the market here and they'll have to cover or get crushed. And that's one of the things that we always want to be realizing with price action. It's that psychology that we go through here on the channel. Remember to subscribe if you enjoy this type of stuff. It's that that really changes maybe a beginner trader from a longer term investor and bigger professional trader. Understanding that when certain key levels are broken, we enter into what we call participation phase. We've had some great participation phases. We'll just quickly touch on oil here. You'll notice that when this level was breached, a very similar kind of zone, there's the breach zone, see the strong movement up, and in fact, the strong participation to the next level, which we have highlighted here. Oil still remains kind of stuck at the resistance and may consolidate for a little while or even pull back down to the 75 zone, but it's had its nice move. It's had its participation, and we'll come back to this one over the next couple of days. So I'm sure many of you would be pretty happy with what happened with Tesla yesterday. We actually moved down to the $1,000 target that we had. And if you were patient enough to wait for the turnaround, you got some great signals. So really with Tesla, the next top stops or the next zones for this stock are always going to be in a very similar area. We've had problems around that 1100 zone before, 1110 and 1200. So if you're in bullish here on Tesla, Things are looking a lot better as long as the NASDAQ follows through, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. There could be an 1100, 1110, and then a breach of that zone could certainly push us back up to the 1200. So for anyone that was looking at Tesla and following the idea of putting in scalps and day trades and tra treating it like a trade, the last 24 hours was your friend. Let's take a look at the five minute chart together right now and break it down. So here's the five minute chart and this is really a story of being patient in the markets. We have a sell off initially. It comes down to underneath the thousand. A lot of people would have been scared, rightfully so. We then see a trough being formed. It moves up and forms a peak. It comes back down, forms a higher trough, and then the sequence is confirmed over here where we get our higher peak. Effectively, this is what we call the lightning bolt, the change of trend on the smaller timeframes. And for people that were looking at this level here, they would have done quite well. While they didn't get the cheapest price, they were confirmed during the day for a bullish session and that follow through has occurred to push it back up to almost 1,060. And you'll see in the post here, it's actually trading at 1,068%. So $1,068, I mean. It's actually trading at $1,068. And this is a big return when you think about pure percentages on the day. Tesla is fast becoming one of the best trading stocks if you're on the day trade, if you're looking at the smaller time frames, especially while we're range bound on the larger ones. When we're stuck in this range, it gives us a much clearer picture of where our targets are. And that's what day traders like. You go you buy at that point, you sell, you obviously get in and out. And it's not so much an investor's kind of playground because it's not just going up, but it is a trader's paradise. Let's move over to Apple because that's fast becoming possibly another one of these stocks that could be in a trading range. We've talked about this level here in previous videos, the 50 exponential moving average, the blue line here. It's been met as support twice. It's been tested as dynamic resistance over here. So we know that this stock respects the 50 moving average on the daily and it's reached the resistance multiple times. Now, I'm always looking at Apple from that buy the rumor, sell the fact. If you've ever thought about what Wall Street likes to do, they often have nuanced trades within certain stocks. And Apple is heavily retail traded. So if you've ever heard of that buy the rumor, sell the fact, Apple's one of those ones that can do that. We have earnings coming up now relatively soon. And you'll notice that often Apple will move into the earnings. So let's just go back through a couple of the last previous earnings and talk about the buying the rumor 
and what ends up happening afterwards. So here we have earnings, we can see the buy the rumor and then the sideways action that occurred. Over here or here, we have earnings, buy the rumor, the actual fact came out, it ended up going down. Here is the earnings. What happened? It bought into it and then sold off after it. Again, this one here, actually a poor earnings, so it didn't do it. And the last one, buy the rumor, sell the fact. So if we see the right type of technicals happen, sometimes Apple can do this. One thing that I will alert people to is Apple is being priced in growth phase again. It's not being priced like it was where it was a very standard PE ratio over many, many, many years without performance on the fundamentals. It's being priced with extreme gains priced into it. So one of the things is going to be the earnings is going to be highly volatile this time around for Apple. And while it's finding support, we do have clear resistance. And this is kind of reminding me a little bit of Tesla. Maybe it's a little bit more tradey in terms of the way we look at this stock right now. Now, oftentimes we look at many different concepts on this channel, but we also talk about sectors. And many people that have been following the channel for a long time would know that I actually don't like airline stocks. I find them kind of highly risky. But here we look at a sector, and this sector has been blown out of proportion several times with, oh, it's amazing value, everything's going to look good, or, oh, we're all the way back. And we can see it's been declining now for quite some time. 2022 brings in an interesting idea, and that is that we may see some of these stocks actually outperform others through this period. We do have some weakness coming in here, but the importance is we're starting to see the turnaround story in some of these travel stocks. If you look at Jets here, and I talked with the private community about this, the idea is what have we got going on? A decent amount of buying volume when it hit these lows. That's probably showing us that Wall Street hedge funds, larger funds are looking to purchase it and they are excited about this. We then effectively have a double bottom. Here's the bottom or the lows with the intervening peak here and then we have the consolidation. So really a very nice potential setup here. It's a back above the previous supports that acted as resistance. We're now hovering here and another breakout could show like a lot of these sectors that things like jets are starting to turn around. The story is becoming much better on the charts. And that's what we do. We try to always focus in on the charts and find the opportunities. Another reason why some of this may be playing out is take a look at this chart here. Now this is actually Berkshire Hathaway versus ARK K. So of course, it's kind of like value or strong value versus innovation. We know what RK is. We obviously know what Berkshire is. When you put them side by side, what was the story of 2021? Value. You can see value far outperformed hyper growth or growth stocks. And that is an important factor because when we come into 2022, what might outperform potentially value? Strong hyper growth quality stocks. When you're talking about those, that might be where we're at. And there are a few reasons why this could occur. Number one, everybody is on the value idea. Everybody's on this concept that value, 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 value. I'm sorry to tell you, value seems to be about a year ago. We're now reaching a point, if you notice here between the correlations where we had previous support and we've got resistance, a very interesting zone where we could start to now see rotation. And that's why we're gonna be following hyper growth pretty heavily here in 2022, because it could be one of those areas where if you get the right ones, some of them are at significant discounts. And a lot of you guys like it out there, and you can pretty much see why it could be doing a turn. We also look at ARK-K and it's down very hard. We talked about the Fibonacci. If we put a Fib retracement on this entire fund here, it's come back down to a 61.8. It's literally hit that in the previous session and now it could perform a base. And you don't wanna necessarily be the person that picks the absolute low here. It's always great to do so, but look at the volume. The volume is strongly up over the last previous sessions. This is showing us that there is some Wall Street purchases. Someone is buying this fund out of control and they are purchasing it larger and bigger quantities, at least in terms of transactions than they've done it before. What we're looking for here, similar to that Tesla scenario, lightning bolts, double bottoms, accumulation bases, something like that, something to show us that the turn has occurred. But there are some strong signs that we're starting to see this rotation that could begin. It may happen over the next couple of months 
and we will be watching it pretty strongly here in the first quarter. What do you guys think? Do you think it's going to occur in 2022? Are you looking at potentially growth, bio, these sectors that are hated, jets? Are you looking at those ones or are you specifically still on board the value train? Are you still looking at value stocks only? Let's move over to the major indices, talk about those. Huge rebounds here across the board. The Russell came all the way down to the 210 kind of support zone, bounced straight off it, and you know what this is. It's a pin bar or hammer, as most people call it. Now, with pin bars and hammers, they're pretty good when they come off key supports. And I think when we look at the NASDAQ, you'll really see some of the key supports that were just found. But it did bounce, it moved up very hard, and if this has what we call follow through, so a continuation of the bullishness, that's going to be a good sign for day traders and possibly even a good sign for investors that we may have just put a bottom in. So we're gonna be watching IWM very closely. Remember, we do not want it underneath this 210 level. If it happens, bad things could go on with the market. So this is the right point for it to turn around. Speaking of the NASDAQ, what happened there? Well, the NASDAQ did it again. It's come down to our channel, guys. Look at this. The trend line continues to be the buy zone. We suspected as much. It sold off very hard straight into this zone in the previous session. It was almost allowed to free fall straight there. And where does Wall Street pick it up? Exactly on this point. So they bought straight off the trend line. We've been talking about this now for oh, I would say months. We used it a lot in 2021 and it seems to be working here in 2022. But there are good signs both ways because bears, you know where you win. You get underneath this, close under that, you're on. Bears, you are in control. You are going to get that 10, 15% correction that you're all waiting for. And who knows, there may be more, but probably around that period. This does give us a definitive spot. The great thing about TA is we get critical zones and we know exactly where things are really going to be turning. And it's hard to be a bear in the markets. Often people say, I short the market, I short the market. If you shorted off what you would have thought is a horizontal support, you could have got obliterated in the previous session. So you've got to be very careful about shorting in comparison to longs. And this is going to be one of those pivotal points. Now, what we're looking for in the next session is of course, follow through. You're looking for the market to continue this bullish story continue up once it goes above there there's going to be momentum and the next stop for it you would think is around that 1600 to uh, 16,200 somewhere around that zone you would think it kind of finds some resistance pressure but it's more than just the nasdaq i mean you know again notice here the nasdaq comes down to the trend line hits it straight up buys through it it's more than that it's got to do with the spy and again the spy came down to the zone so let's break down this zone pretty closely here we seriously suspected this would occur we've got our trend line that's been appearing here another great trend line remember we've got the russell 2000 on support we've got the qqq so the nasdaq on support and we've got the s p 500 hitting the trend line it's amazing stuff we hit the s1 as well so that's the monthly s1 pivot and we know that's a very good pivot to hit because look here at the previous purchasing, look here at the previous purchasing, that's an S2. Sometimes these pivots, when they correlate with really good quality areas are fantastic. And it gets better than that because what else did it touch? Why is this zone so strong? Weekly 20 moving average, guys. The 20 exponential straight into it, bought off that area, pretty strong stuff going on there. So it's, it's pretty good what we're seeing. Now, time will tell whether there's follow through action because Wall Street really needs to continue flowing this through for it to really be solidified. Great thing is bulls and bears know exactly where they're at. If the bears get it underneath this zone and close it, especially on the weekly, they're in control. If the bulls continue the momentum through in the next session, you would think they're pushing it back up to the 480, possibly even all time highs. And we start to look back at our top trend line and of course, monthly pivots to the R1, et cetera. So there's some great zones happening here on the SPY. And again, why did this occur? Well, I think a lot of it's got to do with options. And we said about put covering and getting out of position. So here is the expiration date for the 14th of January, 2022. And you'll notice one outlier option strike, 460 on the SPY. So 460 was breached, possibly some covering going on there as well and then instantly it was bought back above. Wall Street, 
are looking at the 460 zone. 460 is one of those put, what we call put walls here. It seems to be a point where you don't think this week would expire underneath. And I think that's a big position why it's moved straight back up. So very good put wall here that was in play. And you can get access to this data if you want to. Seven day free trial in our comment section down below. You'll notice the private trading community. You can always come in and try it out. There's no reason why you shouldn't. And let's move over to the next week. So what's happening in the next week? Well, again, it becomes a little bit random in terms of strikes here through the middle, but we do have a little bit of a top strike. This is what we call a core wall. Very unlikely that Wall Street will be able to push past 500. Now that's a big ask for it anyway, but there are a lot of calls there. There's a good chance that even if we were to go up heavy, 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 we will not be able to breach that by the 21st of January. So 500, we'll continue to monitor that always get your big option strikes out because when you can bring them together with your technical analysis, it can be quite helpful. Let's move over to the crypto space now. Now the crypto space continues to hover, continues to be a little bit weak here. We see Ethereum holding that 3000 base. It's a big psychological zone for it. We know that Ethereum has struggled quite a lot like Bitcoin. And when we move over to it, what we really need to do is rally above these highs. So we probably need around 3250 plus in terms of Ethereum. Once we breach that zone, we've put in an accumulation base and you would think next stop 3600. So 3250 probably now forming a good resistance area for us to be breaching above should we be going long. Bitcoin is similar. The king here, of course, of crypto, it always tends to be, I always treat, treat it like an index really. If crypto is going to crash, Bitcoin is the one that's going to do it. It's going to bring every single one of the coins down with it. And there are some positive signs in the last little bit of trade. We went down, we hit a new low, and then we fully reversed it. What is it? Pin bar, bullish hammer. So let's think of the story so far. We have long leg doji, kind of like a long leg doji, rejection candle. What do we need to do? Breach above the previous resistances. So if we go down here to the two hour, we've put a base in now, we've potentially stop hunted in the last little bit of a session. And for crypto traders, we're looking at that 43,000 level. We get past 43,000, we've got through the accumulation base, we've done a classic stop hunt here at that point. And if we breach, great news. Accumulation base may be in, we move towards that 46 problem zone. So there are some good trades potentially coming up here on the crypto markets. Bitcoin will lead the way. It's always the one that we have to look at. And that may have just been another stop hunt through the markets overall. What do you guys think about that? It's, it's looking much better. So big news for the week ahead. Of course, Fed Chair Powell testifies in the Tuesday session, may or may not move the markets around. I'm sure it'll increase some volatility there. All eyes are on the Fed and what Powell is going to be talking about, especially, of course, to do with interest rates. They've got core CPI data coming out Wednesday. This is all New York time PPI data on Thursday and Friday. We have core retail sales. So there's a lot of information, a lot of data for the US. Most of this is probably going to be OK. It's really probably all eyes on the Fed for now and what is going to be said. I always look at it as the market's going to do what it feels like anyway. And most of this stuff is preordained in the markets trading. So let's see a follow through. If we do, good for the bulls. And you bears out there, if you're getting excited, I don't blame you because if it gets underneath those key zones, weekly 20 moving average on the S&P 500, wow, it could be on to the bear side and it may be an early bear blood weir in terms of what's going on. But the salmon haven't come out yet, guys. You're still in hibernation. We'll see you in the next video. And also just a quick shout out to everybody. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. But we do want your comments. What would you like to see on the show in 2022? What types of things would you like us to have on the show? Because if there's certain stocks or the certain sectors that you want us to cover and everyone agrees on these things, we'd like to poll you, find out what you want, and then of course, change it for your needs. So I'm really excited to see what you guys think and what you would like to see in 2022. I'm excited for this year. It's going to be a great trading year. I can already feel it. We can see it in the charts also. Bye for now.